a story of a man who was born into poverty. This man grew up in a small town of River Falls, Wisconsin, living in trailer parks and living on food stamps. He had three siblings and divorced parents, and throughout his entire young life, his father told him that he wasn't ever going to be anything special, that he would never be successful. Even his mother mocked his dreams, and every day she told him that he was a joke and an embarrassment. I guess you can say that this sounds like the beginning of a stereotypical story about a man who overcomes great odds, that this is the beginning of a quintessential rags to riches tale. It sounds familiar enough, though. You probably already know where I'm going with this story, but this story is true. The story is of my father, Chad Johnson. You see, life wasn't easy for my father. On top of all the verbal abuse, there was the physical neglect. He would be locked out of his home every day without money, food, or shelter. So how did my father make it? What's the secret to his success? How did he become, overcome these odds? Poverty is a persistent problem that can last for generations, and people can get stuck in the cycle of poverty. Understandably, the thought alone of not being able to make it out of a bad situ situation is difficult to overcome. Add to that the lack of resources, the lack of access, the lack of opportunities, and the lack of education. An upward social mobility is near impossible. In the United States alone in 2018, there were 38.1 million people living in poverty. For many, it's easy to ignore the problem because it's a problem that is out of sight and out of mind for most of us living in comfortable lives. We can choose not to see poverty, even though it's a glaring and growing issue today, as the wealth gap widens. My father's story has shaped me into the person I am today, and has given me a perspective on the issue of poverty that keeps me grounded and keeps me motivated to help those in need. I it took only one person to believe in my father for him to break the cycle of poverty, and it was his brother, Stephen. Though only four years older than my father, he helped raise him into the man he is today. My uncle introduced my dad to sports at a very young age, and by nine, my dad started taking sports very seriously to release any sort of angst or anger that he was going through. Year after year, he started to become more talented in every sport imaginable, and he was even chosen to play in the high school all-star game for football and baseball. At the age of 18, my father barely graduated high school, and he did not have enough money for college, so he didn't even consider it. Still, he was determined to become someone. He was determined to become a success. So, he became an entrepreneur. The first business was created to sell little household items and jewelry to people in his town. And during this time, my father had nowhere to live, so he slept in a small two-seater car. Even though the business didn't bring in much money, my father didn't give up. He would learn more about the sales business, and he would eventually gain more customers. This random idea to try and start a small sales business was a major step out of the poverty my dad was born into. And of course, at some point on his journey, my dad would meet my mom, and she would help my father follow through with his dreams. Having a family was always really important to my father because he himself did not have a stable and happy one while growing up. Meeting my mother, the love of his life, would only reinforce my dad's determination to succeed. My father's story is what makes me what, who I am today, and my father will never forget where he came from. Being poor and having been poor is not something he hides, and he tells me these stories to let me see a perspective that gives dignity to those who are living in poverty. And ultimately, my father's story is about giving back. It's about not turning the blind eye to those in need. I grew up in Michigan, and seeing all of the poverty in the Detroit area, I knew I wanted to do something about it. So, when I was 11, my family and I created a charity organization based in my hometown called Wicked Awesome Wishes. And it's a way to give back to those in need by granting wishes. My favorite one I've ever granted alongside my family would be providing Christmas to a school in central Detroit. Many of the children who attended this school did not have coats, shoes, food on the table at home, and some did not even have a place to stay the night. We brought simple necessities like toothpaste and were received with the children's brightest smiles. And when I realized 
is what I was giving to these kids was a boost in confidence. The material goods and monetary assistance are a great help to those who live in poverty. But I think what ultimately changes the course of a life and breaks the cycle of poverty is that your gift and your presence is a reminder that regardless of their circumstance, that they are wicked awesome, that they are cool, that they have value, that they have worth. And that's why I believe anyone has the power to help change another person's life. Thank you.